22-13, ordinance amending, amending chapter 36 entitled police department, sub chapter 36, 20 entitled contract with private employers or public, public entities of the code of the township of Mount Holly. Do I have a uh, motion for ordinance 2022-13? I have a first by Mr. Brown. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Codiani. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Codiani? Yes. Ms. Astor? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to matters to be presented by the public. Members of the public are invited to submit comments during the public comment portion of this meeting. The council, pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act, will now publicly discuss personnel matters and may choose not to respond to comments made by members of the public during this portion of the meeting. However, the council will give all comments appropriate consideration and will refer all individual complaints to the township manager or appropriate township representative for resolution. Each citizen will be allotted up to three minutes mm -hmm. to speak in order to allow everyone an opportunity to express their opinions or concerns. With that, we'll start in the first row. <coughs> Lopez, okay. address for the record, please. I'll let Mr. Eric go first. Good evening, Mayor Jones and Council. I'm just asking, uh, oh, Eric Thompson, 202 Bridge Lane. I was just asking if you had a chance to review the information that you were supposed to receive. Um, we did receive some information uh, from the police chief. I have not fully um, all the information. I had a couple more questions which I sent out back to him, so I am waiting on further answers. I have not spoken to the rest of council yet on this topic because I have had all my answers met yet. Okay. Um, the other question I have then, if you've just received just a few, do you have the ones from myself and the clerk? I have your information and your... Computer. No, not, not my application. I have the other where I was told that there was no ordinance and there was nothing that they used to uh, build for a policy for the handicapped sign. And like I said, I had reached, I received some information. Okay. There were still more questions that I, once I got that information that I still had, and I reached back out for more information, which I have not followed up with yet, okay. as far as being able to review it. All right, now for council, if you don't have, I have for you tonight, because I've, I've created a packet, 
of information that if I could leave with you all. Because if you if you need some of the photos, because it, it was saying that there were no uh, driveways and signs are the same. I'm not looking to list anyone's name. I'm not interested in the addresses. What I'm interested in is that we stay to the law. And if we're going by state mandates, Mayor Jones, I, I fit that. And as you'll see there, clearly, that without any metal reservation or equivocation, that I am right there, on point. Okay. I appreciate your extra, the extra information. I will compare this with the rest of the stuff and I will reach back out to council so we can come up with a solution for you, sir. Okay, now I also have one question. Where would I go to get a copy of the minute of, the, of August 8th meeting? Who transcribes that? <coughs> and if I have to pay for it, I have no problem. No, they're on the website. So if you can read them right there, or if you want to come to my office, I can print you a copy. So, so, so they were just approved this evening? Okay. Yeah. So I don't know how long. Well, they won't, they won't be on the website, obviously. Right. Because, because they were just they approved they this evening. This evening. Right. Couple, of, yes. couple of days they'll be on the website. Okay. Then I'll be able to get that. Other than that, you have all the emails. And if there's anything that you do not have, I would gladly you know, I'll give it to you because I'm sure there was just a minor oversight that this was not sent to you all. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, moving on to Mr. Lopez now. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening. My name is Louis Lopez. I live in 98 Lever Drive, Mount Holly, New Jersey. First is, uh, can I make a motion to approve an agenda item? Uh, increasing the minute from three minutes to five minutes. Okay, no. I'm making a motion as a citizen of Mount Holly. No, that's a decision strictly by council. Can you make a, a, a decision tonight? Insert a special item and a I feel, for you, I feel that I give uh, no, um, I give more time than the three minutes allowed, and the three minutes was put in place to make sure that we move the meetings along. Well, as when we have a lot of people in here, it became a lot of back and forth and over talking. So the three minutes was implemented for that. As long as we are moving smoothly and working together, no screaming, no yelling, I have no problem extending a little longer time, which is I have done in the past, which I have explained to uh, Councilwoman uh, Astor when she um, asked the same question. The well, second question, do you uh, use uh, some of the budget, money, uh, budget uh, money? to buy a, a speaker so you can introduce for the next year's budget so you can use the budget money that's all it works for the new building as soon as we get the final approvals of that and the, that is all for that so this is not our full-time building this is a temporary use right now so i understand that it's a struggle but we're we're going to put the money into the new building so it's done properly uh, second is uh, where I live, there's a little minor pot, pot hole. No, I say minor. It's a person going so fast, 80 miles per hour, 60 miles, it could first create an accident, flip the car or the bumper will fall off. I see a lot of uh, speeding and never try, and especially, you know, one of the motorcycle, if you hit the button, motorcycle go up. You know what I mean? Then hit. I don't know if that's to prevent from speeding, but that's a, a concern, you know, the I've road, seen a lot. The, the road still um, hasn't been finished because of the construction in the area. It's no, it's, one, it's one Pacific spot. Okay. Well, they're, when they do Levis, they're going to do the entire Levis drive, not just one particular spot. 
but they still have underground work that needs to be done. So I just want to put that on record. But we can have public works look into patching if we can. We're filling it in for a little bit. We will also reach out to the police chief uh, with your concerns about the speeding, especially with that being in school zone. Um, right now, I do not have a time frame. I would have to go back through the minutes and everything from previous planning boards to find out. Um, I have one more uh, one more uh, yes. event. Um, wonder if, if the township, uh, you know, if have any credit, they could use my videos and they could use, uh, you know, uh, you know, I never edit them, I just straight upload to YouTube. If you could use that in case, uh, you know, of the audio got messed up or anything. And one more thing, we have an event, uh, coming up, which is Camp and Holly. That's a union, uh, a union firehouse. By uh, 18 Washington <coughs> Street, Friday, uh, September 16 at 5 o'clock, and one September 17 at 11:45 p.m. Thank you. That's I, I an event in my holiday. Thank you, Mr. Uh, anyone else in the first row? Moving on to the second row. I just wanted to follow up on the damage that was done at Washington and High Street, um, where the truck took out the, um, uh, the bumper that's supposed to keep people from coming on the sidewalk. We received the money from the other person's insurance company. We're just waiting for the contracts to be available to be Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, anyone else in the second round? Um, I live at 97 Gilm Street and Loretta Rosal. I noticed that on Shreve Street, we have a new recycling plant going in for plastics. Um, I'm curious as to where the runoff of their water and discarded water is going to go. Is it going to go into the Rancocas Creek on the other side of the road off of Shreve? We haven't had any conversations with the township. That's, that's, Excuse me? We haven't had any conversations with the township at this point. Well, are we going to approach them are they discharging as to find water? out? Are they discharging water right now? Um, I'm not that I know of. I'm try, trying to figure this out. Okay. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there's no cars in the parking lot, so it is not open yet, but its signage states that it's going to be a plastic recycling and I'm just curious as to where the runoff water is going to go is it going to go into our rain cookers creek and then also flow into mill dam like mr. brown said they haven't come in front of the township to apply for any permits or any zoning thing <laughs> If there are any requirements, I'm sure we will make sure that they meet every requirement that we have to set in place as soon as they come. So, do us. we know of any requirements? Do we, as Mount do we, Holly, do we as Mount Holly have requirements put in place? Environmental problem? Uh, yes, we do, and that's okay. all code enforcement. We'll make sure that Thank you all that's taken care of. Thank you. Anyone else in that route? Rich Carpenter, 135 Union Street, Mount Holly. Uh, I just might as well read you these uh, questions that I have and you can take note to them and I guess get back to us later on, but they are also about the GBD international company that's taking the, uh, used to be the modern packaging building. But if they are going to be doing the recycling according to what's stated on the internet and everything, the amount of trucks that are going to be going up and down Yoon Street is going to basically be doing the same thing on Yoon as what it did on Shreve Street where it took out a lot of the water pipes. People had to replace them because of all the truck traffic back 20, 30 years ago it took place. Um, will Yoon Street, because if it does come into place, will the street be structurally tested and or repaved for the extra amount of traffic. 
Um, will there be, actually, will all the citizens of that area and residents receive any kind of notice stating that this company's moving in? Do you have any uh, nays, nays or nays about the company moving in before they move in? The same as we received from uh, Trevdan when they moved in. We had the option of coming down to the township and disputing you know, this company coming in and what they were going to be doing. Uh, if they are moving in, there's definitely going to be an issue at the corner of Hume and Pine uh, during the school hours because right now it's 10 to 15 minutes as with a car trying to get out on Hume Street because of the traffic that is being stopped for the kids during the getting into school and getting out of school. Uh, again, uh, like this uh, other lady had mentioned, as far as the product, whether it's going to be a, a liquid or a soil waste, which we have enough, we, none of us know anything about. Um, we're also concerned, if it is a plastic plant, is there going to be smells? Uh, I've lived here for 71 years, and I dealt with the landfill quite a few years where it had an atrocious smell we called up to have it complained, to have it filled, and it took a week or two to get it filled. We dealt with it, unfortunately, but we don't want this to happen again with another plant coming in. Um, the truck parking that is down there right now is next to nothing, so if they're going to have the amount of traffic that they're stating about on the internet that they have up north, uh, right now, half the side of U Street is no parking. So does that mean that the signs are coming down and there's going to be tractor and trailer parking on that side of the street? Um, and, well, last but not least, you know, are we going to be notified before the company establishes itself in the building? <coughs> um, that's my question. I could get some sort of follow-up answer in time, then I would appreciate it. In time, we would be able to give you some answers to those questions. We did write them all down. Um, if you could email a copy of that to mm -hmm. us, just to yep. make sure we have your questions fully. But hearing a lot of your questions and concerns, a lot of that would be um, be able to address the, with the company coming in front of the Planning and Zoning Board, which would give the uh, residents the opportunity in that area. They would all be noticed because of the laws that they have to be noticed and you guys would be able to come in and so so it is proper for us as residents of the area to get some sort of notification yes, yes. so do you okay. guys not Wait. know about Wait. this company yet yet they're putting it on facebook oh. okay oh. <laughs> all right tom did you have something oh, no. i just i can't okay i don't want to turn to problems right so That was all your question, sir? Yeah, other than the fact that I just heard that the planning board meetings are on Zoom, so how do we get involved with the planning board you meeting? Will, you will get, you'll get a notification um, if, as soon as they become on the docket for the planning and zoning board, you will be notified directly from the company because that's their requirement to do so. For all the residents can be Within so many, within 200 feet. Okay. I didn't win. It's 200 feet of the location required to solve the configuration. If not, it will be on our on our website. There's a planning and zoning link to the Zoom. Okay. So in other words, if we don't have a computer, you won't be able to interact. Okay. Last time. One person at a time. Okay. Thanks. Well, right now, because of the situation, the planning and zoning board still does meet via Zoom. Um, you can use your cell phone call in with a landline you can still hear you you don't have to have the visual picture and you'll still be able to ask questions and have your questions answered just like you are tonight <coughs> and, and, and mayor i think it's important to also note that uh, I, I don't want any public to leave here this evening and think that they're going to get a notice immediately next month that notice is not going to come until the applicant makes an application for the land use board so if you don't get a notice next month don't, don't worry, okay? Anyone else in the third row? Or second row, I'm sorry, I lost track. 
side. We'll move on to the third round. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. I'm SFP Grand Jones from New Jersey State Police, assigned to New Jersey's Office of Emergency Management. Also with me is Lieutenant Monica Newfer. Uh, she's the uh, unit head of the unit. I also have Burlington County OEM, Deputy OEM Coordinator Kristen Carr. This is a follow-up to the previous uh, meeting, which I believe was in February, seven months ago. Uh, where Trooper Chris Warwick addressed council with issues with OEM coordinator Ryan Donnelly. Coordinator Donnelly continues to refuse to answer emails or phone calls, whether it's from the county or from the state OEM, uh, relating to compliance issues. As it pertains to his role as emergency management coordinator, and as per the state statutes, which is the Civilian Defense and Disaster Control Act, Directives issued by Colonel Callahan, which is also the State Director of Emergency Management, and also executive orders issued by the Governor. I provided those documents to Council and Mayor and highlighted some of the pertinent statutes, directives, and executive orders uh, that we're addressing. Uh, the first issue is the Emergency Operations Plan, which has been expired since October 31st, 2018. We've issued five letters to uh, Mount Holly OEM in reference to this. And this is also in violation of state statute, the Civilian Disaster, Civilian Disaster Control Act. that states every municipality must submit an emergency operations plan to the state OEM for approval. We've tried to have dialogue with uh, Coordinator Donnelly and he refuses to answer any of our letters, phone calls, emails. Another issue, training requirements. As an OEM coordinator, you're required to have uh, training as per Executive Order 248, Directive NJOEM 1, Directive NJOEM 7, and State Statute. We've continually asked Coordinator Donnelly for his training certificates. To date, we have no certificates on file. Third, uh, there was an Executive Order 284 recently issued that has to do with uh, CERC, which is anytime a facility within a municipality reaches a certain threshold of a hazardous chemical, they're required to create a planning district. That was uh, issued in January 20th of 2022. The county has continually reached out to Coordinator Donnelly to complete a survey, which he did not do. The county actually did the survey for him. Uh, there's also a requirement to set up the LAPC for that. The county has continually reached out to Coordinator Donnelly and he has not responded with setting that up. The county is actually looking to take on that responsibility, but it requires the cooperation of the coordinator to provide that information. So the county is willing to help in that process. Unfortunately, if we have to continue to get no cooperation, we have to start with the process of removal, which is in the statute, which would be done by the governor, which is provided in there. I would hope and rather see that Coordinator Donnelly begin productive dialogue so we can resolve this without proceeding to the recommended of removal. We understand everyone is busy and we are here to help. We have offered help to all the municipal coordinators, county coordinators, the counties have offered help, but if we continue to not have a dialogue, we can't help. It's almost like we don't exist. They're just, he's just blowing us off. Um, Unfortunately, uh, mayor and council appoints, and ultimately the liability and responsibility fall under this group. So I hope that you would help us in, in resolving this so that we do not have to move any further. things. First, um, I wanted to thank you guys for organizing the 9-11 memorial yesterday. It was it was really well done um, and I think was like perfectly matched the moment and proud to be part of a town that, um, that hosted that. Um, so thank you for that. Um, another thing I wanted to let you all know, um, we have the car show coming up, weather um, permitting on October 15th and yeah, uh, yeah, again it's in October, it's in June. 
wanted to remind you guys, um, we do have a mayor's choice card. You can come out that day, let us know, we'll give you your application, you guys get to pick one. Um, so we'll let you know those, those things are coming up. Um, something else, I just wanna hand this over to you guys. I went to the Lumberton uh, Council meeting end of August. I'll just give it to you. Sure. Whatever. Okay. It's the packet that they hand out at, when you enter the when you enter the room. I didn't get the chance to check it out ahead of time, um, but when I arrived, that was waiting for us all. It was the agenda and all of the ordinances and um, resolutions that were up for review or reading, second reading that night. They happen to not have any first readings that night, so I don't know how in much advance, if at all, they're sharing anything on first reading. But at least when I walked in, I was able to. <coughs> read through those ordinances ahead of time instead of just having the title on the agenda, which I found incredibly helpful and something I would love for you guys to consider. They also also clearly have a permanent um, place to do their meetings, but um, it was very easy to hear everybody. They had microphones set up. Um, I wanted to remind you, this is something I brought up, others have brought up. You hit the red button. Once COVID stop, stop telling us as much. We do have some people in town who are in the audiovisual um, business studio in town and some other people, some venues, who have offered to come in and just do some temporary mics and PAs, so that helps both directions for you to hear us and for us to hear you. Please reach out, because they offered it really for free, so um, even if it, I know that this is temporary, but it seems like it's gonna be a, a while. We'd love to hear you guys a little better. Um, they also have their public speaking moment, public session moment is five minutes, which felt good. I know you guys have been considering that, but just for a couple other points of um, perspective, I know, believe it or not, I know I have three minutes when I'm here, so sometimes I do like truncate what I'm gonna talk about knowing I really should take three minutes. So just knowing that there's five might, might be helpful. Um, and then the other thing is, given that we're only meeting once a month, it might make sense to kind of extend that a little bit too, since we're no longer meeting twice a month. Um, and that is it, so that my, my so one question for you then is, now that you've had first reading on several things tonight, when will we be able to those ordinances and resolutions that you guys voted on. Um, is it just a few days before the next meeting or is it published? You can email me at any time now that no, you've done first reading. first reading. I'll email you copy right reading. back tomorrow. Is that some is that something that maybe we can consider just pushing out or posting so <coughs> we can grab it and we're not all just emailing you for all of this stuff all the time, Sherry? Um sure, but I, where do you want me to post it? Like you want me to put it my plan and I haven't, you know, this is in the works, hopefully yeah. for next year, is it will all be on the website. That's ideally, yeah. It's not there yet. Yeah. But we're working. Okay. <laughs> in the meantime, email me. Okay. You're not bothering me. I'll send it right back. Thank you. Did you also print out, there was a packet by the door, um, I mean, I'm going back a ways, but we used to get a packet of what was going to be that night, and now we just get an agenda. There is, you know, we used to get more information for that. Uh, anyone else? I'm going to move out here because of our lack of, those people just can't hear. Okay. The air conditioner's been there for years. I understand. It's 494 Arlington Pfeiffer. Um, I'd like to bring up the, the uh, downtown. You guys did your, rub your ribbon cutting. Great to see the park for the kids. Would love to see a skate park on the other side because I don't think we're going to get the water park. Um, the other thing was I would love to see all the water bags off the trees that we planted a few years ago. They're detrimental at this point for all the trees the environmental committee did three, four years ago. They need to be taken off. They're going to start choking and killing the trees. Um, the, uh, the trucks that are coming down the street, McKillen Street, I worked for a utility for 35 years. Mount Holly was established in 1678. We really need to look at what's underground because those trucks should not be coming down those streets with the utilities that we have between gas, water, our sewer. It really needs to be looked at um, for our town. All the big trucks, all the semis that come down High Street that are just rolling. I mean, it really has, we are a historical, beautiful town and our our underground system has not only, it's not been updated. I mean, it has been updated in sections, but um, I really would love, love to see that. And I went to an MUA meeting. Seems they're really doing well at MUA. Possibly, we really need to look at 
all of our underground systems in and maybe look at grants or anything else that we can get to upgrade the system. But uh, yeah, the, the trucks that come through this town are just way too big for what we have. And we have beautiful homes that shake. And it's mm -hmm. just a shame, just a shame, shame to see that. But again, we're, we're moving forward. And yeah, I'd love to see it. I just love to see us progress. <coughs> and I've been to meetings for years and to see how this progresses with people coming and people in interest, it's, it's amazing to go from three or four people to seeing this. So I'm very happy to see all of you here and you know what you guys have been doing. Thank you very much. And uh, Marlene, before you sit down, um, for the bags on the trees, uh, what areas can you say again? Yeah. They're everywhere. We planted okay. trees with the environmental committee yeah. four years ago. So we have pine, we have Washington Street. I think they're all up in the hospital in Madison. They need to come off. They're at the point that the bags have to come off. Tree protectors, maybe another year for the beavers, but the bags need to come off. Hi, I'm Nick Sedano, 47 Garden Street. Um, first question is about communications. Um, there were no communications officially, but I did send something to council, and um, I thought that was a communication. So what officially gets included in communications is my question. Um, your request would not fall under our communication. That would be something <laughs> council needs to, sorry, that would be something council needs to discuss before having anything discussed in an open meeting, because we can't have a back and forth constantly. If we're up here trying to talk and make a decision and you guys are chiming in, it doesn't work, it, that's not the way that it's going to work. So you requested us to look at something, um, we, uh, we've been provided with additional information that I had asked for. I didn't get it until today and I did not have a chance to review any of it. So I am unprepared to speak on this topic any further other than that. We, I need more time to review it. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I guess um, my question is a little more geeky than that. Like, if there's a communication received, is it not proper to acknowledge that, that there was a communication received from Ms. Sedona? You guys need to look into it a little more, but it's as if it doesn't exist officially in the record. That's my issue. That's it question. doesn't. In your mind, it doesn't exist because it's not on. It's not listed on the agenda for them to know what. Exactly. But we all received your email, all right. so we understand what. Yeah, and I received an email back from you. Yes. Okay. So I know that you received it. I received your email. I did, and I reviewed it. But I didn't get a chance to review the stuff that I got today with with my work and then doing the okay. cutting ceremony before so, the meeting, so I understand. I have a chance. Thank you. Uh, re relative to what, what I sent, I, I just wanted to say this. I, I think you should um, consider this. Um, it's not Nick Sedano saying that residents of the township should be receiving these products that are done by this contractor. It is literally the township that required that this happen. It's in the request for a proposal. So when you consider, I don't know what additional information you got, but when you consider whatever additional you got, you should consider that the township literally put this out there as an official document demanding that people do this. So um, I felt as though when we're asking for, for a contractor to propose that they give residents compost from the leaves, that probably should hold a lot of weight, even if the conditions have changed somewhat and you need to, I mean, the manager may need to uh, hey, Nick, be, be flexible, hey, be hey, flexible. Hey, Nick, yes, sir. Um, were you not able to get the compost? Me, personally? Yes. Yeah, I was able so to get compost. You were able to get the compost? Yes, I was. So the compost was in an area where other residents could get the compost? Right? Yeah, a whole cubic yard for the entire town of Mount Holly. So that means it's access to compost? No, not really, because 
When I ask whether or not more can be delivered, I am told, oh, our public works department may not be able to do that because we're so overburdened. When in fact, the contract and the RFP require that the contractor supply this stuff to the place. It says it right in the RFP. So I understand, is, but if it's so, I understand what he's trying to say is if it's there at the location, but nobody knows about it. That's another issue. Okay, now that might be an issue that that, that, would, be, that falls into communication, right? That's okay. it. When a, web, when a new website is up, we can do a better job of getting that communication out. Okay. But the point I'm trying to make is is something there's the, the compost is available for residents, correct? There's a pre yeah, cubic yard. Yeah, that's the answer to the question. Yes. There is a cubic yard no, in the no. entire town of Mount Holly. You don't want to acknowledge that, then fine. There is, it is all right, all right, all right, stop. You have to learn no, to answer You're not a prosecutor. Or you have to learn to answer the question first. Is the compost <coughs> available for the residents of Mount Holly? No. How do you figure? Because there's way more people than one cubic yard can supply. Okay, no, you have to answer the question. Is it available for anybody to go down there no. and pick it up? You guys shut down the you guys shut down the Harold Avenue location as per Josh. He told me that. Even though the RFP says that there should be 18 hours per month for the residents of Mount Holly to go there. He said, no, I'm not doing that. And for safety reasons. Safety? Safety because that area is, is surrounded by woods. Uh, they're just like the park. Just like the park? Yeah, the park's surrounded by you know trees and woods. And there's also lights at a park, correct? Yeah, you can go during uh, the day. I mean, I mean you want to nitpick. You want to go during do the this. day? Why not? What? You can go during the day. You go during the day? Who goes at night? You need lights at Who, night? Do you, does everyone work during the day? No. No? So oh, so it's only available for the people that <laughs> don't work during the day, right? Okay, it's a safety issue. Uh, uh, that, I, that was the reason why we closed the No, he said there was a dumping issue. A safety reason. People go down there illegally dump, get injured on township property, there's no lights, there's no police force that, right. that are going down so there. So our answer is to put one cubic yard in the park. The answer is that it was supplied for residents. We will do a better job of allowing residents to know that it's there, but it's been sitting there for two months. There's right. grass growing out of it. Right, because no one knows. Right, but it's available, so we will do a better job of making it known that it's there. Thank so you very much. Can I ask a question? Certainly. There should be a location, there's a location down at, um, by the uh, Ironworks uh, Park by the uh, creek entrance. So it's been provided there, but... Um, where is it listed? Where is it what? I'm where sorry. Where is it posted that it's available? It, it's not posted, and that's why I said we will do a better job of making sure that the residents know it's available. Because I'd like the Mount Laurel to buy it. Then, because oh, that's... And, and, uh, and we... We're Guys, we're not doing side conversations in the public. If you guys want to have a conversation after the meeting, that's more than fine. But mm -hmm. we have to keep these meetings going forward. Anyone else in that last row? Fourth row. Claudia McNamara, 249 Shreve Street. I'm bringing us back to the GDB plastics recycling issue. Uh, I've written to you all three times and had no acknowledgement from anybody. So I just want to put that into your system in terms of communication. I had some questions about it. I have two major concerns. One is the truck traffic on Home Street. I can't, it's already heavy with Dean Demolition and the uh, Trevan. So they get a lot of truck traffic. The amount of truck traffic that it sounds as though this site is going to generate 
sounds huge. They're going from 18 million pounds a year of plastic processing to 80 million. What proportion of that is going to be at Shreve Street or at uh, Home Street at that site is, was, it's both on Home and Shreve, is unknown. I appreciate that you're talking about that we have zoning requirements. It sounds as though if we're not proactive, they're going to be here and then ask about zoning requirements. They've apparently already purchased the site. They're already beginning to bring in materials to do things there. And the signage is up. Pardon? The signage is up. Yeah, the the signage, signage is up. So they're yeah. already here. They're not, they will not be allowed to operate without a, a CO from the township. Well, that's great. And then if they're making a huge financial commitment, they're going to fight that with their money, which is going to be a lot more than our money as a township. So I would like to ask you and ask all of us if there's what we can do proactively about this. One more piece of information. I spoke to uh, the DEPs at the state <coughs> level. Uh, I spoke, her name is Donna, I can't remember her last name right now, who is the solid waste person at the DEP. They have not yet been notified. She said that GDB is authorized to function in Middlesex County not yet in Burlington County. And she had no notification until she got my email that this was happening. So it's, it seems to me, I, I'm not particularly a paranoid person, but it seems to me that GDB is moving without letting anybody know, moving forward, so that they can be a fait accompli, and then everybody accommodates afterwards, or gets lost in the way. So, that, there's truck traffic, I really bothered me because Home Street has so many children to play with. And then the runoff into the creek. The two rivers in New Brunswick where GDB is located, Passaic and Raritan, are loaded with microplastics. This processing plant takes plastic that will be recycled and turns it into the little microplastic bubbles or nodules. No, myrtles. Myrtles that are then purchased by manufacturers and sent off to the manufacturer to make whatever they make out of it. So our creek is there that runs, you know, it's a precious product. It runs down to the pipelines and down to our body. Um, so it breaks my heart. And if we are passive, we're going to have it. Three Birch. So for those of you who don't know, I've been coming here April, May, June, July, August, and now we're into September. In April, this is not lights around a wooded area. I alerted them with pictures, You're supposed measurements. You're the council, not the residents of the township. Oh, well, see, here's the thing. I've come here and I've had everybody's back turned to a life-ending problem. Shreve Street is collapsing because Dean Demolition is breaking at least five ordinances. Yes. They are not zoned to be there, but yet nobody will come out and address it. Nobody looks. Their trucks, the tri-axle dump trucks, are driving 69 inches from a 40-foot cliff straight down into water. You want to toss the pig and see if it lands upright on its side? Are the trees going to go down on top of the poor guy? Because I guarantee you a truck driver is not wearing a seatbelt. So I couldn't figure out the why engineer, the I'm engineer, getting ignored. The engineer has reviewed it and he doesn't think that anything on the road is compromised. I'm sure you say that. Have you gone and looked? I'll tell you what our engineer wants. All right. Well, you might want to get another engineer because I'm sure would you let a tractor trailer drive 69 inches from the edge of a 40 foot cliff? I don't think anybody with half a brain would do that. Is there a so, report? Is there a can we please not have side conversations or else we will, we will stop the public comment and we'll move on with the rest of the meeting. So anyway, this is one of the financial press releases 
from GDB. The sign went up a day or two after the last meeting. Once I knew the company's name, it was easy to figure out why and who they were. So, recycling. It, do you mind if I dump out some plastic bags on the ground and show people what a pound of plastic bags looks like? Please don't do that. Okay, my grandfather would actually be very mad because he expects them back. But I have two bags of bags, which is only 10 ounces. That's a lot of plastic that's going into this facility. They are planning on consolidating all three of their New Brunswick locations, and they're planning on moving it here to Mount Holly. They're planning on processing 80 million pounds of plastic a year. They are shredding it. They are a plastic scrapper. So if I slap a recycling sticker, on the plastic bags that I put on the ground and call it a new rug for you, it doesn't make it recycling. Recycling is an action. It's what you do with trash as an alternative to putting it in the landfill. This company is not making something. They are actually making pellets, microplastics, out of the trash. So somehow, where along the line, they're getting it from, they're washing it here, they're sorting it here. Probably most of it's going to get into a landfill anyway. So if you have 80 million pounds coming and going, let's say that one tenth of one percent escapes, like for no fault of their own, because that's a lot less than what escapes on trash day around here. That's an additional 800 pounds of trash that's gonna be blowing around Mount Holly. Forget the creek, because clearly nobody cares about the runoff from that. But 800 pounds of plastic bags, of plastic bottles blowing around so that some other company can make money off of us. I mean, personally, I am very proud of the fact that now security is here risking everybody because I had a little side thing with Jason Party online who tried to discredit me and say that, oh, it's for public safety. They're always there. Well, now I guess he's right. So Mount Holly can't need the money very much because we're frisking people at a council meeting. This press release, I was here in April. This press release, financial, from an international company, came out in March, the month before I was here. I was here April, May, June, July, August, September. My deeply conservative mother, very religious, said lying by omission is still lying. So somebody is lying because this company had this press release in March. They bought the property in March. Yes, and they're gonna be consolidating okay. all of this here. And you're okay with this? They bought, bought the property. Okay with anything. They, they, they bought the property in March. They haven't done. informed us of anything to, up to this point. Well, Dean yeah. Demolition didn't either. And you're allowing that, you allowed them to collapse a road. And it. he's still driving on it. The road is not compromised. I just told you. Do you know how high 40 feet is? If somebody jumps off the roof of a 40 foot building, do you think that they'll survive? The, what does that have to do with the road? What does the road at 40 feet have to do with anything? The because road, we're telling the road's not compromised. The engineers, you asked us to have engineers I go would out like to see that report. If I send you an email, Will you mail me, email me, the actual report from your engineer that says, I do not see a problem with 69 inches from the edge of a 40 foot cliff for tractor trailers. They send an email, but I, I think maybe is it an over request at that point? Tom left, because I know he had it. So yeah. I don't know that answer. But because the last time we went up around with this and the over request was gotten, there really wasn't an engineer that looked at it and did an actual official report. Isn't that what we pay him for? And the reason I faced the audience is because I've been facing you for months and you've been turning your back on me and on the safety of everybody in this community. And no, I couldn't get complex because Nick took it all. <laughs> oh, and I have copies of this for everybody. I would like them to take it, and I would like you to make copies of it and hand it out. Anyone else from the back row?
Michael Rothmel, um, 33 Union Street. Um, I would suggest that you Oprah the engineer's report for Street Street. Um, and I also suggest you Oprah all communication fees with Penn Township and GD, GDP. See what communications there were with them between the time they bought it and now. I'll listen, I'll listen to that for you now. There has been none. So. Okay, well, that's a, that's feel free to Oprah. Feel free to Oprah. Um, anyway, there's, there's a lot of concerns. If you look at this press release, number one, the plastics they want to export to Mount Holly were banned in China. China refuses them. So are we going to be turned into a second world country? Um, I guess yes. Um, number two, if you look at the press release from March, what's really concerning is the company is saying not that we are going to apply to Mount Holly to transfer three machines that are now in the Brunswick to Mount Holly so we get to process 80 million pounds of plastic. They say we are going to do it. We are hiring 15 people to work at the facility, including two to three operation managers and machine operators. So their press release um, is looking into the done deals. A GDP will work with Irma to train its new employees from Mount Holly site at the equipment suppliers Massachusetts facility. They've got plans for training. They've got plans for moving the equipment from New Brunswick to Mount Holly, and they got plans to hire people. They know exactly what they're doing. So if the township is really, truly going to say you have to apply first, I would urge the township to write a letter to GDP tomorrow to say, hey, you can't do anything at that site until you make proper application to the planning board and zoning board. And you, who knows if you have to do an environmental impact statement if they're going to be putting microplastics into the creek in that, in that area. There's a lot going on there. And the problem I think everybody is concerned about is that they're writing as if it's a done deal. And that's why there's some distrust in the back row and the front row here. And that's the real concern. Especially it doesn't make sense. We're passing, we're, we're considering a truck ordinance and it was very nice. People came up, the truck ordinance, the, the council listened and their signs up and that's good. So <clears throat> now we're gonna make an exception for local deliveries to a plastics plant that drives a hole right through the truck ordinance if they're gonna be allowed to make deliveries. Um, so it's gonna be the exception that swallows the rule. And that's another reason for concern for people. So I think there's a lot of legitimate concerns here and have to start with somebody saying, hey GDP, don't rely on your purchase of the building to believe you can move here. They don't have a reliance argument in advance of moving. So I think that really that has to be done proactively. That's the proactive step I think Jenna was asking for. And um, it's a real concern. Um, and the other, just a, on, a, on a side note, I would note that I, I did talk to Randy in addition to the green bags being able to be removed, the, the, the three protectors at Mill Dam and Ironworks can also be removed. Excuse me, can't hear you. I said, I'm sorry, we're going to close the public portion for tonight's meeting and move Thank up you. the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine by council and will be attacked by one motion. Should a council member wish to discuss a consent agenda item separately, that item can be removed from the consent agenda and considered its normal sequence. First item is resolution number 2022-96, authorizing the refund or cancelization of property taxes for block 23, lot 25, 319 High Street. Resolution number 2022-97, authorizing the lease of new police cars. Uh, approval of the bill list and the department head reports. Does anyone on council wish to take anything from the consent agenda and vote on separately? Hearing none, we have a motion for the consent agenda. I have a first by Mr. Brown. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Codiani. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Codiani? Yes. Ms. Astor? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Thank you. Madison, is it reported by a township manager? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Martin Solicitor had a previous yeah. engagement and had to leave, so uh, he's not here tonight. Uh, Madison, is that by counsel? Mr. Codiani? Yes. Um, just for people's information, um, plan board meetings are always the Monday after council meetings at 7 o'clock. Um, you can find all the, um, the Zoom information 
on the previous agenda too, so you don't have to wait for the, the current agenda to come out. Um, that mulch pile that was talked about tonight, uh, you go down to Ironworks Park past the school, there's the boat ramp there, it's in that area. Um, if you're looking to get some mulch or just for curious of where it's at. And um, also next week there's a, we'll still have to see if we'll have enough agenda items, but environmental committee meetings are always also the Monday out there at six o'clock an hour before. Ms. Astor, do you have anything tonight? Thank you. I hope you feel better. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Deputy Mayor Brown. Not at this time. Myself, thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, again, if we, you know, I know these meetings get heated. Um, I understand, but if we do try to keep it uh, civil and the side conversations to a minimum, that way we can all get through the meeting and uh, move it all along quickly. Uh, with that, our next meeting is October 3rd um, at 5 p.m. 6 p.m. Sorry, I read the executive session. At 6 p.m. Um, with that, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second.